right? Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Nikki Manoledaki. I'm a software engineer at Grafana Labs and co-chair of the Green Reviews Working Group, which is part of the CNCF Environmental Sustainability Technical Advisory Group. Yeah, and my name is Kristina Dewochko. I'm a platform engineer at Tia Every and a technical lead for Environmental Sustainability Technical Advisory Group. So let's get started. We hear quite a few myths and misconceptions around the topic of environmental sustainability uh, being spread in the cloud native space and in tech industry in general. There is also a high risk for greenwashing, which we're going to talk a little bit about later. Due to that, we believe that it's important to utilize arenas like KubeCon and CloudNativeCon to spread awareness and share factual data in order to avoid for these myths to be shared even further. So let's put on our MythBuster hats and attempt to debunk four myths in four minutes. The first myth is that a company can achieve net zero through carbon offsets, so why do optimizations and monitoring matter? Let's look at the definition of net zero from the Science-Based Target Initiative, which, is a UN co -found, which was co-founded by the United Nations and helps companies to set climate targets. A company must halve emissions by 2030 and reduce emissions by 90 to 95 percent by 2050. So only 5 to 10 percent of the remaining emissions can be neutralized through offsets. So that's a lot of reductions, and that reaches engineering as well. Also, carbon offsetting is not a perfect solution. On the one hand, it can be used to invest in communities that reduce carbon, but on the other hand, it doesn't always work. Like in 2022, it's important to note that wildfires in North America burned through forests that were used as carbon offsets. So these natural areas also made, uh, that were destroyed also made offsets redundant. Another myth is that moving your applications and platforms to cloud uh, makes you uh, sustainable and green by default. Well, the research shows that um, the average capacity of hyperscalers is going to more than double compared to the current operational capacity of the data centers. And that is in addition to the general total count of data centers that will keep increasing. And the, the res uh, and this is due to the growing demand um, and impact of advancements in technologies like Gen AI. And data center resource needs will also keep growing, and that's when shared responsibility model becomes even more important. Cloud providers must do their part to improve sustainability of the areas that they can control, including availability of transparent and up-to-date emissions data of their cloud offerings. But us, as consumers, must also do our part to measure and utilize cloud resources in the most energy and resource efficient manner. For instance, lift and shift approach clearly illustrates how in many instances a poorly designed and developed application or its cloud deployment can be running on a very green and sustainable cloud provider but generate more emissions than a fully optimized and well-architected application running within a traditional data center. One more myth is that cost is a direct proxy metric for sustainability. And by direct proxy metric, we mean that when you can't measure something easily or directly, like sustainability of your applications or platforms, you use an alternative, correlative metric like cost for measurement. And it's, in reality, it's not that easy, and there are multiple scenarios where this statement does not stand. For example, choosing a region powered by renewable energy sources is often more expensive. Reserving compute instances for a year or even longer provides a significant discount, but it prevents you from reducing resource usage in case application needs or load changes. And while turning off instances is often recommended as a cost optimization pillar, you may still be leasing the underlying hardware, preventing other customers from using that. And even if you are not using that compute time, components like storage and networking are still used to support turning those instances on at a later point. 
So remember, the more sustainable, the most sustainable resources are those that don't exist. That's why deleting unorphaned or unused resources is an important and easy step we can do for more sustainable utilization in the cloud. And another myth that we encounter is when a product or company mentions environmental sustainability. And this kind of leads to the topic and the high risk for greenwashing. Greenwashing is misleading statements that lead the public to believe that a company is doing more to protect the environment than it is. So we need to ask for transparency, accountability, upstream and downstream. And we need to also look for if words are matched by action. So trust but verify, be curious, ask questions, share doubts, find credible sources, and join communities such as the CNCF Environmental Sustainability Tag. Thank you.